All right. All right. Is anybody there? I'm still exploring with this um, with this YouTube um, platform. Uh, share this on Facebook for me. Let's see if we can get some people in this evening as we uh, kind of deal with, I guess, a controversial subject. Last time I was with you all uh, live, I talked about uh, don't get pimped. Well, tonight I want to talk about don't get tricked. Because how many of you know that there are two sides to every coin, there are two sides to every story. Wherever there's a hot, there's a cold. Wherever there's an in, there's an out. And uh, there's a component to this relationship thing that applies to men as well. I spend a lot of time talking about a uh, relational game. I cannot read this thing for some reason. I think the light is, is blinding me. I spend a lot of time talking about relational game and I talk about it from the perspective of, um, usually I talk about it from the perspective of a woman being abused and misused and um, manipulated by, um, by men. But I want to kind of flip the script tonight and I want to kind of deal with uh, the reality that um, just like there are deceptive and predator like men that uh, pursue women, there are also uh, female predators. There are women that pursue uh, good men. And there are some good men, contrary to a lot of people's opinion, opinion, there are some good men, but a lot of them have been ravaged and broken uh, at the hands of women that did not deserve them. And so uh, tonight I want to kind of look at this. Don't, don't get tricked. Understanding the dangers of a deceitful woman. Now, this is a lesson that uh, single mothers should share with their sons. This is a lesson that um, you should encourage all of the men in your life to listen to because it's very, very real. And I use the word uh, trick and I went to uh, the Urban Dictionary, to, Urban Dictionary to find the definition. What does this term trick mean? What does it mean to be tricked um, from an urban perspective? And the Urban Dictionary says that uh, trick has clearly different meanings depending on the context it is used in. Definition number one, a trick is a woman that teases a man in order to get her bills paid or gets him to buy her things. This is the Urban Dictionary, so this is raw. In return, the woman, the trick, pleases the man physically, and we know what that means. I didn't write all of the definition because some of it got uh, rather graphic. Definition number two, a trick is a man that pays prostitutes for sex or a man that pays women to hang around them. So there you have it. That's the Urban Dictionary's perspective on what a trick is. It's, it, it can either be applied to woman that uses her sexuality to lure men in, which is the you know, perspective I'm using tonight, or you can flip it. It's the man that is used by the woman um, who is simply luring him in for her own selfish agenda or her own personal gain. In Proverbs 7, 1 through 5, uh, it says, My son, keep my words and lay up my commandments with thee. Keep my commandments and live. And my law is the apple of thine eye. Bind them upon thy fingers. Write them upon the table of thy heart. Say unto wisdom, Thou art my sister. Say unto wisdom, thou art my sister. And call understanding thy kinswoman, that they may keep thee from the strange woman. The Bible calls her a strange woman. From the stranger which flattereth with her words. So the Bible calls this woman um, the strange woman. This is the woman that enters into the life of a man and dismantles his future. This is the 
woman that enters into the into the life of a man and dismantles his marriage. This is the woman that enters into the life of a man and dismantles his family. She's the strange woman. She's the woman that God did not ordain for the man. But yet she's the woman that he is in constant pursuit of. She's the strange woman. She's the woman that uh, wives are concerned about. She's the woman that uh, interferes with the man seeing clearly relative to what a wife material really is. She's the strange woman. Um, in 2 Timothy, well, let me, let me make this statement before we go to 2 Timothy. This woman, um, this woman, this strange woman, as the Bible calls, calls her, the Urban Dictionary calls her a trick. This woman appeals to the sexual immaturity of the man. This woman appeals to the sexual immaturity of a man. You know, quite often we ask the question, how is it that uh, men of such renown, men who have attained such great success, men who have gone to, you know, realms uh, in, in, in business, in sports, in ministry, in corporate America, whatever, whatever, whatever. How is it that these men fall for the kinds of women they fall for and end up losing everything? It is the sexual immaturity of a man that becomes the undoing of the man. It is when a man is not sexually mature, when you are a 30-year-old man making sexual choices that a 20-year-old or an 18-year-old man would make, you're on a self-destructive path. When you're a 40-year-old man making the kinds of choices that a 25-year-old man would make, you are on a self-destructive path. If you're a 50-year-old man making the same kinds of immature, irresponsible, sexual, relational choices that a 25-year-old man would make or a 30-year-old man would make, you are on a self-destructive path. And the, the strange woman, or it's hard for me to even say it because I have, you know, you know how I feel about women, but as we're using the, the street terminology, the trick, she can sniff out a man that is sexually out of control. Just like the male predator can sniff out the naive, credulous, gullible young woman or even older woman, the, the female predator, that's what we'll call her, the female predator can sniff out a man who is sexually out of control. And as we're going to see in, you know, moving forward in this lesson to today, um, there are a lot of men that get married and are sexually out of control. But in 2 Timothy chapter 2, she appeals to the sexual immaturity of the man. That's how, that's how this woman gets into your life as a man. That's how this woman gets into your life. And I've had my share of, of this kind of woman these kinds of women, because at, at a point in my life, I was sexually out of control with no government, no sense of righteousness or judgment. And they became those, those limitations, those immaturities in me, those, that lack of discipline became the gateway for all kinds of women that should have never been in my life to gain entrance because of my own sexual immaturity. 2 Timothy 2, 21 and 22 says, if a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. Watch what it says here in verse 22. Flee also youthful lusts, with the S on the end, many different kinds. But follow righteousness, faith, charity. But he says, flee also youthful lusts. Now, here's the sad thing. It, it can be uh, expected to find youthful lust in young people. 
but it's another story when you're a man that's 30 plus years old and you're still you, you're still the container of youthful lust. You're, you're still containing the same kinds of appetites that you had when you were an 18 year old and you're 30. You're a married man, you have a family, you have a reputation, you have a business, you have a future that you're trying to build for you and your family but you're still governed by, watch this, youthful lust. Every man needs to deal with his youthful lust and youthful lust as it pertains to man primarily, not entirely, but primarily speaks to our inability to control our sexual appetite. The difference between a man and a boy is that a man can control his sexual appetite. If you may be 40, 50, 60, 70, if you can't control your, se your sexual appetite, you are nothing but a grown male. You're not a grown man yet because a grown man can keep his pants up. A grown man can be in the company of, of women that might be beautiful, they might be whatever, 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 but because he's a grown man, he has control of his youthful desires. That stuff that used to govern his life uh, no longer rules the day because now he's a grown man. He's a person of what? Responsibility. He's a, he's a person of what? Covenant. He's now a person that is a leader. He's a now a person that is setting an example for the next generation because he's a grown man. He can't afford to jump in and out of the bed with every little woman that's you know, walking up and down the street because he's a grown man. He, 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 he has grown man responsibilities. So he has a grown man's discipline. Now let's look at some of the characteristics of, um, it's hard for me to keep using that word trick. So we'll just say, the female predator. Let's use, let's say that, let's say that. Let's look at some of the characteristics of a female predator. And I'll tell you why it's hard for me to keep using that term trick. It's because every woman is a queen. Even those that fit the profile of what I'm getting ready to describe tonight. Every woman is a queen, most just don't know it. So even the woman that fits this profile she is predestined by God to be a queen, but she's ignorant of her own, she's not conscious rather of her own identity. That's why it's hard for me to keep using that terminology. It's because I don't want to cement an idea in the mind of a woman who can be transformed and whose mind can be renewed because some of them may watch this. And I want, I want them to know that you don't have to keep living the way you're living. You were never designed to live this way. You were designed and ordained by the creator to be and to function as a queen. So we'll just use the female predator. Characteristics of the female predator. Number one, she searches for a man with limited experience in the ways of the world. She searches for a man with limited experience in the ways of the world. She is, she's looking for a man that's green. She's looking for a man that's gullible. Uh, and this is again, where as, as men, you know, if, if you didn't have uh, the, the unfortunate um, occasion to live this life, so as to learn these lessons through all of the experiences that most men like myself did, you then need fathers that will cover you from that, train you and raise you up covered, but then teach you how the world functions. See, in a lot of instances, the same thing that goes on in the lives of women who are suffering from father wounds is mirrored in the lives of men. It's just that with the men, typically the men become predators while the women become victims. But in this case, we're talking about the women being the predators and are the minority of women being the predators and the minority of men being the victims. And they look for men that are inexperienced in the ways of the world. They want a little green man to play on. A little green man, preferably with some money. If you don't have no money, they're not going to deal with you. But if you don't know what's going on, you just, you know, you... 
You grew up in Mayberry, and now we dropped you off in New Orleans, downtown New Orleans on Bourbon Street. They can sniff you out. They can smell the green on you, and they attach themselves to you. Look what the Bible says in Proverbs 7, 6 through 9. You need to, you need to share this with your sons. It says for Proverbs 7, chapter 7, verses 6 through 9. It says, for at the window of my house, I looked through my casement and beheld among the simple ones. I discerned among the youth a young man void of understanding, passing through the street near her corner, talking about this strange woman. And he went the way to her house in the twilight, in the evening, in the black and dark night. She says, I observed a young man that was on his way down to this female predator's house. He was going at night as though he thought he was, he was covering things up. But she says he was young and void of understanding. She, she was young and he was, he was young and void of understanding. And this is the kind of man typically that female predators are looking for. They're not really looking for a man who has the kind of experience that I have. <laughs> because the game turns, you know, the game, you know, the game flips on them. But when they find a man that does not have real world experience, but he's an earner, they attach themselves to him and they can make him feel like they really love him. And watch this. Here's another tendency that that she has when, number one, she's, she searches for a man with limited experience in the ways of the world. She will become sexually aggressive with the inexperienced man. She will become sexually aggressive with the inexperienced man. There's some of you uh, young men that are, are getting, may, watch, may be watching this now, may watch it later, and you're dealing with women that are just overly sexually aggressive. I'm going to tell you, that's the kind of woman you run from, to be honest with you. When I was in my, in, in, I mean, in my, at my worst stage, I mean, at my very worst stage, when I was just living the worst life possible, I ran upon a woman that was worse than me. And I won't get too graphic or give you too many details, but I tell you one thing, I went to running. When you find a woman that is more aggressive, more sexually aggressive than you, you need to be careful. You need to be careful. Look what the Bible says in Proverbs 7, continuing. Verse chapter 7, Proverbs 7, 10 through, 10 through 13. And behold, there met him a woman, talking about this same young man, void of understanding. And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot. In other words, she was dressed like a streetwalker and subtle of heart. She is loud and stubborn. Wow. Do you know any women like that? Dressed loose, loud and stubborn. Her feet abide not in her house, running the street all day and night. Now is she without, now in the streets and lieth in wait at every corner. So she caught him, watch this, the same young, young man, void of understanding, verse 13 says, so she caught him and kissed him. And with an impotent face said, and she caught him and kissed him and said, let's go make love. Good God am I. And you know the poor little fellow, you know, he was caught off guard, all his little hormones got to raging and his little mind, his little body got to reacting to that. And, you know, she just got sexually aggressive with him. Why did she get sexually aggressive with him? She perceived that he was void of understanding. For if he had understanding, he would have run from that woman. Because no man in his right mind wants a woman that he just meets and is se more sexually aggressive than he is. It's too much there, buddy. That's too much right there. So, so number one, she searches for a man with limited experience in the ways of the world because she can take advantage of him. Um, now, here's, here's, here's another a second quality. I don't know if we call it a quality, but a tendency of this woman, this woman that is the female predator. She can be 
pimped by, listen to this, this woman will be pimped by a no good man and then trick a decent man. Let that one sink in. She will be pimped by a no good man and then trick a good man. Every prostitute on the streets tonight, well, maybe not all of them, I suppose. Most of them, should I say. Most prostitutes on the street tonight that are going to trick men out of their money and their goods or whatever, 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 have a pimp they're bringing that man's money back to. Every, 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 well, watch this. There are women that will use a good man and then be abused by a no good man behind the scenes. Use a good man for whatever you want as, as, as a come up uh, scheme or whatever, whatever, whatever. And then have, you know, even marry, even marry the poor little brother just to, you know, for appearances. And then still have Charlie in the background. She will be pimped by a no good man and trick a decent man. That's what happened with uh, Samson and Delilah. We talk a lot about the Jezebel spirit, which is true, but you need to look at that Delilah spirit as well because Delilah was a show enough trick. I ain't got no problem calling her trick. Delilah was a trick. Judges chapter 16, verses 16 through 20, it says, and it came to pass when she pressed him daily, she just kept pressure on Samson daily with her words and urged him so that his soul was vexed unto death, that he told her all his heart and said unto her, there hath not come a razor. She's trying to find out the secret to his strength and how can she get it out of him? And he says, there hath not come a razor upon my head, for I have been a Nazarite unto God from my mother's womb. If I be shaven, then my strength will go from me and I shall become weak and be like any other man. And when Delilah saw, that he had told her all his heart, she sent and called for the lords of the Philistines, saying, come up this once, for he had showed me all his heart. She was using a good man on behalf of a no good group of men. Then the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and brought money in their hand, and she made him sleep upon her knees. Wow. And she called for a man and she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head. And she began to afflict him and his strength went from him. And she said, the Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awoke out of his sleep and said, I will go out at other, as at other times before and shake myself. And he did not know that the Lord was departed from him. This woman tricked him. She used him, but she was being used by others. And this woman, the, the female predator, quite often will abuse a good man and be abused by a no good man. She'll take, she'll take uh, everything that this no good man has to offer. He can disrespect her. He can call out a name. He can put his hands on her. He can just push her to limits unbelievable. And then she'll meet a, she'll get a decent man and she'll abuse him. Uh, now watch this, number three, she will engage in sexual conversations with you, even though she's married. She will engage in sexual conversations with you, even though she's married. And you, you find these women where? On the job, you find them even at church. Yes, it does happen at church. Everybody want to act like the church is just this perfect place. Everything that goes on in the world goes on in the church. Yes, yes. People have sexual conversations on the parking lot of the church and probably sometimes in the sanctuary after the worship service is over. And even though this woman is married, she'll have sexual conversations with you. You have to always, as a man, you have to always run from a woman who has a, who has a wedding ring on her finger and will engage in a sexual conversation with you. That, that woman is a predator. 
that woman is not to be trusted. A woman that is married and will engage in a sexual conversation with you, watch this, even if her marriage is on the rocks, if she engages in a sexual conversation with you and she's married, you have to begin to use your discernment. You can't allow your, 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 your you know, your, the natural stuff to happen and just bring you into places that you're not supposed to be going because you're under the influence of this woman's, uh, you know, sexual spell because that's what she's doing. See, a woman can captivate just like a man captivates a woman with conversation. Well, with a man, can, a man can talk about things that touches a woman's heart. Well, if a woman talks about sexual things and if a man is not discerning and paying attention, she can mold him, put him in the middle of her hand like putty and mold him into whatever she wants him to be. This is how you have a lot of men who say, babe, I don't know how I did it. I love you. I don't know how I did it. And the wife don't want to hear that. She don't want to hear that, but it's true. It's because you, you gave your ear to a predator. It's because you gave your ear to a predator. When a woman is married, or even if she's not married, if she knows you're married, and she starts up, you know, she begins to throw out these sexual uh, innuendos. It's time for you to move. You got a jet. You you are dealing with a predator. She's just she's just in the grass lurking, and she's going to pounce in a minute. And and you don't want what's going to come after that. I promise you, you don't want it. In Proverbs 7, 18 through 23, it's the same woman, she says, is still dealing with that boy, that, that young boy that was void of understanding. Now he's dealing with this woman that took him and kissed him and got sexually aggressive with him. And look what, look what happens in verse 18 of Proverbs 7, uh, 18 through 23. She says, come, let us take our fill of love until the morning. She's talking to her. Let us solace ourselves with love. Watch this. For the good man is not at home. My husband ain't here. He has gone on a long journey. He had taken a bag of money with him and will come home at the day appointed. See, she was just using her husband for the what? Money. With her much fair speech, she caused him to yield. Poor boy. You know, the Bible says with, with the way she was talking to him, she caused him to yield. With the flattering of her lips, she forced him. He goeth after her straightway as an ox goeth to the slaughter or as a fool to the correction of the stocks till a dog strike through his liver as a bird hasted to the snare and knoweth not that it is for his life. She forced him into sexual activity with her words. Don't tell me it can't happen. I've had it to happen. And I'm saying, no, 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 I ain't doing this. I ain't doing this. I ain't doing this. And man, <laughs> Lord, have mercy, Jesus. Lord, help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. I'm telling you. And, and the Bible says she forced them with her much fair speech. When a woman, when a woman that you're not married to, or a woman that's married to somebody else, begins to talk sexual language with you, it's time for you to get ghost because it's getting dangerous now. It's, as, a, as a man, see, everybody won't, you know, I don't care nothing about me being no bishop, no pastor, no, no whatever, whatever, whatever. I'm a man before I'm any of that stuff. As a man, I got to know my limitations. I can't be in no conversation with no woman talking no uh, uh, highest, you know, no, no, no overt sexual, uh, using overt sexual content. My flesh ain't gonna let me last too long in a situation like that. So when I hear conversations like that, I'm like, holla, your boy is out, got to go, got to go. I see my future going down the drain. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying. You got to know that when a woman begins to talk sexual language, she is a predator. She, she's trying, she getting ready to break your home up, man. She getting ready to, to destroy your marriage. You getting ready to lose your reputation and your future, your business and your ministry. You, you getting ready to lose it. Now watch this. So point number three, she will engage in sexual conversations with you, even though she's married. And here in Proverbs 7, 18 through 23, this woman was married. She told the man, my husband gone. He took some money, he gone on a long journey. I know when he's coming back. Come on, let's go make love. And the Bible says she forced him with her much fair speech. Now, the danger in this woman, in this point number three, where, where she, she will engage in these sexual conversations with you, 
so as to tempt you into some kind of sexual act. The danger in this woman is that sometimes she will use one man to make another man jealous. She will use one man to make another man jealous. This is a dangerous woman. She'll, she'll use you and set you up to be discovered because she want a man to find out that there's a possibility she got somebody else in her uh, bed. And then the man is going to come looking for you. And now you got, we got, we got two more statistics or one more, st well, two more statistics. One get killed, the other going to jail. Because of a woman that wasn't even worth all of that. You got, you got to be careful when, when a woman is married or even engaged and she's talking sexual language with you. She is a dangerous woman. She lacks judgment or she is setting you up. I'm working on this thing. I'm trying to. Look what Proverbs 6, 32 uh, through 35 says, but whoso committed the daughtery with a woman lacketh understanding. That's why I don't get in the bed with women, man, other than my wife. I have sex with one woman. Her name is Lisa Blakes. I, I, I travel all over, over the world. I ain't, ain't nobody at my hotel room. I ain't sleeping with nobody because the Bible says, whoso committed the daughter with a woman lacketh understanding. He that doeth it destroyeth his own soul. A wound and dishonor shall he get, and his reproach shall not be wiped away. For jealousy is the rage of a man. Therefore, he will not spare in the day of vengeance. What he's talking about here is you sleep with somebody, commit a daughter and sleep with a man's wife. But jealousy brings a man into rage. And in the day of vengeance, he won't spare. He will not regard any ransom. You won't be able to pay him to leave you alone. Neither will he rest content. Though thou givest many gifts, he gonna kill you. And that's, that's what a female predator can bring into your world. You, you, you messing with somebody else's wife, though she seduced you, not a man trying to kill you. And while, while, while they funeralizing you, she going to be down at the, um, at the prison house talking to him through the glass, talking about how she going to uh, get, get him out. And you dead. Number four, she will connect with you to access your power and your influence to use your influence and power for her agenda. She will connect with you to access your power and influence to use for her own agenda. This woman, watch this. She's very, this woman is very pushy and she's very controlling. She's a professional manipulator. And she searches for a man with power and influence. That's, that's why you get, you know, okay, I ain't going to say that. Thank you, Jesus. That's what, that's what um, really and truly, when you, when you look at Jezebel, that's what Jezebel was all about. That's the Jezebel spirit. Jezebel came in and she capitalized on Ahab's power and influence and she subdued him and she took his power and influence and used it for her own ungodly agenda. In 1 Kings 19 and 1, the Bible says, and Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and without, with all how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. So here you see Ahab coming back, reporting to Jezebel like she's the king. She's taken his influence. She's taken his power. She's taken his manhood from him. He's a yes man at this point. Number five, <sighs> she will destroy intentionally, she will intentionally destroy your marriage and your reputation. And watch this, never commit to you or anyone else. She's not only sleeping with you, she's sleeping with two or three other people. 
and she 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 will enjoy destroying your marriage destroying your family destroying your reputation and draining you of everything god blessed you with and then laugh about it in the club after it's all said and done you think you think you macking when you being mac you think you pimping big big homie when you really being pimp when that woman gets through with you she gonna leave you with nothing your children ain't gonna want to talk to you your wife ain't gonna want to see you until it's time for you to write the check you ain't you, you're not a big pimping you think you're playing p-l-a-y-i-n-g take the l out you ain't doing nothing but paying you think you're playing but you're really paying slash the l out on me look at the look at the look at the bible says in proverbs 31 31 1 through 3 watch this y'all share this with with young men they need to hear this they don't need to learn this through experience they need to learn this through instruction proverbs 31 1 through 3 the words of king lemuel the prophecy that his mother taught him what my son and what the son of my womb and what the son of my vows give not thy strength unto women nor thy ways to that which destroyeth kings the queen is teaching the young prince boy don't sleep with all of these women don't sleep with these women don't give your strength don't give your muscle to women don't give your strength and your power to women and don't do those things that destroy kings what pulls kings down sex how many great men have you seen have some sexual indiscretion just hit the bottom it's finito it's like oh and it's not that god doesn't forgive because god does forgive and he restores but it does something to your psyche you allow certain spirits to come into your life uh proverbs 6 20 through 29 my son keep thy father's commandment and forsake not the law of thy mother bind them continually upon thine heart and tie them about thy neck when thou goest it shall lead thee when thou sleepest it shall keep thee and when thou awakest it shall talk with thee let these words i'm sharing with you let these words talk to you for the commandment is a lamp and the law is light and reproofs of instruction are the way of life to keep thee from the evil woman here she's called the evil woman from the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman lust not after her beauty in thine heart neither let her take thee with her eyelids for by means of a whorish woman a man is brought to a piece of bread and the adulteress will hunt for the precious light she's hunting for certain individuals can a man take fire in his bosom and his clothes not be burned? Can one go upon hot coals and his feet not be burned? So he that goeth in to his neighbor's wife, whosoever toucheth her shall not be innocent. It's a powerful text there, man. Now, there are three things I want to share with you um, as I shut it down. Um, relative to adjustments you got to make as a man if you're a man in a situation like this where you're embracing a woman that is tricking you and you, you maybe maybe you discover from what i'm sharing with you man i'm you know i'm being played here there are three things that you at least these three things i'm certain that there's more but at least these strengths these three things i want to share with you at this time number one you got to understand why you're drawn to this type of woman because nobody really told us listen listen to this very carefully nobody told us as men that when we sleep with all of these women that we're developing soul ties and when we finally grow up and we really want to have a wife and a family and we want to live a decent and respectable life as men of god that those soul ties will continue to come and haunt us and pervert our ways and we will be drawn to certain kinds of women and don't even know why and it keeps destroying our families we keep having divorces and we keep being drawn to women that we don't need but for, there's something in us that that just you know we need this kind of woman 
and it disrupts everything righteous about our lives. You are drawn to this woman. Now listen to this very carefully. You are drawn to this woman, this strange woman, this, I can't say it, uh, female predator. You are drawn to this woman because, listen to this, she is driven by demonic forces of sensuality. The attraction and the attachment are based in lust. This is why you can't stay home with your wife and you. this woman can just send you a text message and have you lying, getting up out of your marital bed, leaving your family and risking everything. It's because you are, you are in the grips of a thing called lust. And now you're trying to grow up, but your flesh won't let you because you got a soul tie and it's lust. You have not defined it as yet. You're trying to figure out why am I continually attracted to certain types of women? The trick can attract the attention of a man. Listen to this very carefully. And I got to read it like I wrote it. The trick can attract the attention of a man faster than a wife if he's out of balance between his flesh and his spirit. In other words, you can be more attracted to a trick on the street than you are your wife at home. If you are not in a place of balance between your spirit and your flesh. Now watch this, listen, listen look, look what the Holy Spirit showed me today. Now y'all listen to this very carefully, it's gonna help you. In Proverbs 31, there's this woman called the virtuous woman, and we use her as the description of the perfect helpmeet, the perfect wife, mother, whatever, 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 whatever. And the Bible says in Proverbs 31 that her, you know, her husband speaks highly of her, children speak highly of her, she does him good and not evil. And, and there are many descriptions about that woman in Proverbs 31, but as a wife, but there is no reference to their sexual life. And though she is the epitome of what a wife should be, there's no reference to her sexual life. And I asked the Holy Spirit why. If she's the ultimate wife, why is there no reference to her sex life with her husband when sex is so important to her husband? And the Holy Spirit said, now listen to this very carefully. The Holy Spirit said to me, a man can and should teach his wife how to have sex, but he can't teach a trick how to be a wife. There's no need to mention their sex life because all things, if all things are ideal, she had none before him. And if she didn't have, if she was a virgin when he met her, it was his job to teach her to be everything he needed her to be sexually. You can teach a wife how to do those things that you need in your bedroom, but you can't teach a woman on the street how to be a wife at your, I'm preaching better than y'all shouting. So you are drawn to this woman because of the spirit of lust. You are in the grips of a soul tie and the root of it is lust. The root of it is lust. James 1, 14, 15, every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust and enticed and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it brings forth sin and sin when it is finished brings forth death. Number second thing you got to do, number one, you got to understand why you're drawn to this type of woman. Why you keep going to the strip club? Why you, why you don't stay home? Lust, number two. You got to face the reality that freedom, freedom, freedom is in defeating your flesh through abstinence, through abstinence. Now, nobody wants to hear me talk about that, male or female. And I'm sure that the brothers probably definitely don't want to hear me talk about no abstinence. But I'm going to tell you, if you're going to ever be free from tricks, you're going to have to crucify your flesh. When the Lord dealt with me and I got serious with God, man, I, told you, I tell y'all all the time, my testimony, I locked up in my little apartment. I laid on the floor before God 
and I, I confessed all my sins. God purged me of all of that stuff. When I got up off of that floor two and a half days later, I got rid of the phone book. We had phone books back then. I got rid of the beeper. I got rid of the cell phone. I, I, I cut off all means of contact. And I starved my flesh. I refuse not. Now you're talking to a young man in, in my early 20s at this point. You're talking about a young man that um, had been sexually active from an age so early. I'm, I'm embarrassed to tell y'all. And y'all know I share a lot. So I'm telling you, I'm embarrassed. You know, it was young. I had been sexually active from that young of an age. And the Lord said, you just got to cut this off. And I cut it off and I allowed that flesh to die. And I promise you. Weeks later, after I had starved that flesh, man, people would see me that I normally would, would be moved by. I stayed away from places where I knew people might be. And I was no longer moved. My flesh was dead. I was so in tune to the things of God, I had control over my flesh. It was dead. I had to get control of it because there were too many women that were living in my soul, man. If I didn't, if I, did, I, I venture to say, if I didn't go through that time of purging, I would not be sitting here, the man that I am today. You got to face the reality that freedom is in defeating your flesh through abstinence. You got to stay away from that strip club. You got to cut off all these little women. First Corinthians 9, 27 says, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. Lest that by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. You got to bring this body, this flesh into subjection. And then number three, you got to live your life in the open. If you're going to be free from tricks, you have to understand why you're drawn to that type of woman. You have to face the reality that you're only going to find freedom and by defeating your flesh through abstinence. You got you to gotta abstain. You got to let that flesh die and you got to baptize yourself in the things of God. Number three, you got to live your life in the open. You need some accountability. You need some accountability. You know, you need some accountability. You don't need friends that have the same problem you have. You need some friends that are delivered from that and are, and are living their lives the right way. You don't need, well, I ain't going to say that. You need pastors that can hold you accountable. Huh? You know, those of y'all, those of you brothers that, 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 you know, you know, you fall subject to this kind of spirit. You need to, number one, be honest with your significant other. If you're getting ready to marry somebody, you let them know this is what I struggle with. This is, you know, this is, this is lust. And then you got to take and put your life in a place of voluntary accountability as a man. I'm about to put some pressure on you now. I don't know if you're ready for, it. if you got a significant other, she got to be able to hold you accountable, you know? You can't have codes on your on your phone. If you got the thumb thing on your phone, put your put your woman's thumb on there too. You, you got to live a voluntary accountability lifestyle. You got to live out in the open because tricks don't like to come out in the daytime. They come out at night. So when you start shining the light on the situation, you it's, you're gonna be amazed at how. See, that's why I can travel all over the country. Don't nobody get out out the way with me. Nobody gets out the way with me. No, because people know what I stand for. I live out in the open. They know, they know you get out the way with me. You're subject to be on YouTube, Facebook, Periscope. That man's subject to call your name. Because I live my life out in the open, in the wide open. And I got to live it out in the open. I got to live it out in the open. Because if I start going off into these dark places, what, what, the same man I described to y'all that used to be, he ain't there. He's still in here. The dude is still in here. My spirit man just has him in subjection, but he's still in here. The day I take my, my life out of the spirit zone and I allow this flesh to have another shot at it, you got to live your life in the open. First John 1, 5 through 7 says, This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him, in him, in him is no darkness at all. I was able to go through that experience I had and walk in victory because I stayed in him.
and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. So don't get tricked, man. Don't get tricked. I hope y'all got something out of this. This was hard for me to deliver. But I hope y'all got something out of this. Your sons need to hear this. Your nephews need to hear this. Some of y'all have friends that need to hear this. Um, we don't want our good men broken by the wrong women. We don't want our good men. And there are a lot of you brothers that are going to watch this. You've been thinking you've been pimping. You've really, you're really being tricked. And you really stop and think about what does this woman have to lose? You have everything to lose. And you think you, you think you, you think you, you tricking. You ain't tricking nobody. That woman got you, man. She got you. But you're too blind to see that because you like that young man. You, you're void of understanding. And you're you sitting there looking, I don't care what that old dude say. I'm going to do what I want to do. Well, don't be calling for this old dude when it all comes down because it's coming down. I'm here to tell you, it's coming down. You don't think the devil got a plan to expose you? It's coming down, homie. I believe the Lord just sent me here just to warn you and to give you, spit some wisdom at you. You can receive it if you want, not if you want. Because when I press this button and I'm off here, I'm going to go take me a shower, get in my bed, and go to sleep. But I love you all really and truly. I hope you got something out of this. Go to my website, rcblakes.com. Um, Check out my book, Soul Ties. I think it'll help you, male and female. It will help you. Soul Ties, Breaking the Ties That Bind. Uh, visit, uh, you can email Lisa and or I at pastorrcblakes at gmail.com. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. And uh, if you've not subscribed to my channel, subscribe now. Invite your friends to subscribe. I'm going to be doing a lot more on YouTube. A lot of, uh, yeah. A lot of special stuff I'm going to be doing here. So I appreciate you all. I, I, I cannot read the writing. I think it's because I have my screen too dark, actually, trying to conserve battery. So I, I'll, I'm going to have to just read the comments after I'm done. Hope you got something out of this. I hope this helped you. Share this as much as you possibly can. Help me to get this message out. I want to help somebody. God bless you. I love you. Remember, you're on top and going higher. God has more in store for you. I'm R.C. Blakes, Jr. Have a great one.